sometimes for me, putting my own stuff to the side to help others is actually the best thing. Because sometimes you think, oh, well, I really got it terrible and this is awful. And then you see something, especially the things that I've seen in, in East Africa. And you're like, oh my gosh, my problems aren't that great. <laughs> but this is what they're dealing with. Wow. You are now listening to the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, The Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author and Maxwell Leadership Certified Trainer, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some tips and techniques to advance yourself coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by book number two from Dominic Dom Brightman, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. It is the field guide to help unleash the elite performer that is inside of you. Cop it today on Amazon.com or heading over to DomBrightman.com and snag it in book, ebook, and audiobook. So that way you can take it on the go and get yourself on the go to your northbound success. And today on the Highlight Reel, builder for authors known as the Going North Podcast, GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous. We got another super special, awesome guest that fits all three of those G's and more, baby. That's right, indeed. You're going to see my good buddy, Jenny from the Business Block, a.k.a. Jennifer Glass, herself, past guest on the podcast, who's a fellow podcast host and an author, I should have said, bookcaster, indeed, because she hooked me up with one heck of a super special, awesome human today, because not only we got another author on the show, she is a registered nurse. So, Animaniac Swag, Happiness Ahoy. Uh, that's a pun with today's guest. Anyways, a speaker, a humanitarian, world traveler, and the founder of the Mother Martha Family Foundation. So, we don't have Stuart. We got someone even better. We got the magnificent and heavenly Martha Hoy. How are you doing today, Martha? I'm good. How are you? Oh, doing fabulous. <laughs> Great. Right. Ah, yeah, that's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right. Fabulous. Great. All the R's, R and R, or the M and M's for Mother Art Martha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right, indeed. She's secretly got a mixtape coming out in the near future before the decade's over. She's gonna bust some rhymes for us, maybe. That's right, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just mess it with you. I mean, hey, Mother Martha, Eminem, Candy, Rapper. Hey, it was a pun waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, but hey, as you know, with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 175 days long. And I probably only covered 75 seconds of what you actually do. So mind filling in folks on a bit of your backstory of how you got to where you are today. So it's your first time on Going North. Well, how I got to where I am today, I have quite an interesting story. Uh, there's a book about my life, and that's why we're here. It's called Becoming Mother Martha, just as you pointed out, Eminem. <laughs> you know, I was a registered nurse in West Virginia, and um, I was in a pretty severe car accident, and I had to run for my life, and Two orphans that I'd helped in Uganda actually saved my life in West Virginia. And I decided that I really wanted to tell my story about this. And my passion for helping children in Uganda actually grew. And that's where the name Mother Martha comes from. The two orphans that I'd helped in Uganda actually started that nickname for me. And what happened after I ran from my life is what the book Becoming Mother Martha is about. How I went from this abused woman in West Virginia, this nurse, to becoming known as Mother Martha in Uganda, which is an East African country. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, so the two kids in Uganda saved you in West Virginia. So how'd that happen? Did you bring them over here? Did you like save them from certain doom? Like how'd that happen? Jeffrey and Ivan were their names. Actually, it was three gentlemen total, uh, Jeffrey, Ivan, and Joe. So Jeffrey was my sponsored child, and he was actually in Uganda, but his brother Ivan was adopted by a friend of mine in Minnesota. 
So when I ran for my life, he actually took me in, in Minnesota until it was safe for me to restart my life. And he had a roommate named Joe, who was also from the same area of the world. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. Gotta love the kids. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. When they get to save the parents. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's what makes it very interesting, I guess, is, you know, because when I ran for my life, I was like, who, who do I trust? Like who, who always has my back? You know, and this was a, a an orphan that was 7,000 miles away and he indeed had my back. Ah, uh, there you go. So who had the front? Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have the front. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, told you it was a danger zone with the puns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but by goodness, so with all of those sad moments that were actually turned around for the better, like making a run forward from West Virginia, then making it all the way to Las Vegas to start a new, like, my goodness, so how, how was that like? Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was a painful process in terms sure. of hiding and everything else. <laughs> sure, you know. I always say it was like a, a process of self-discovery, you know, because when you live in abuse and you don't really know who you are, right? So it was kind of like, um, you know, I had a friend who moved to Las Vegas and she was like, hey, come to Vegas. You know, what a better place to restart your life. And yeah, so, you know, it's Vegas, right? The bright lights and all the excitement. So what the book is about um, from there is what happened after I got to Vegas. Uh, I guess that's probably where the turning it all around, you know, taking all of the traumatic things and turning it around. And that's when we decided that we were going to start a foundation to help these children kind of give back to the children that saved my life. Right. And um, what I did was I, I got some money together and I actually went on a trip around the world. It was kind of like, you know, Mother Martha got her groove back. I don't know how you want to say that, but. <laughs> well, damn right you did. And, uh, yeah. So. I, I, the only thing I had left from my life was the suitcase and that was it. Like I walked away from my entire life and I had to for my safety. So I, I packed that suitcase and said, if that suitcase could tell stories, <laughs> it finally <laughs> did uh, at the end of my journey, which actually ends up back in West Virginia, it actually comes full circle. So uh, that suitcase and I, we we went on one hell of a, a journey. You know, we uh, we ate pizza in Milan. We went to New York City, uh, Paris, France, uh, the Middle East. I had some adventures in the Middle East. I know <laughs> not a lot of people would think about adventuring in the Middle East, but you know that's me. And um, I so I ended up in Uganda, of course. And um, the book also starts talking about who I met because I also, uh, you know, met an African prince and um, had something going on there and um, met some interesting people along the way during that journey. And as I said, it ends up back in West Virginia coming for full circle. Uh, what's so That's right indeed. That was Virginia, baby. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. In case, in this case, the double West indeed. <laughs> but my goodness, so with all those wonderful travels, my goodness, and meeting all those wonderful folks, like my goodness, did you, I guess that's where your books really came from, just documenting your journeys along the way, or did you able to really go to full sponge mode and your brain absorbed all of it? <laughs> well, I honestly, I really didn't want to write about it. And i had been a writer for some time and a friend of mine who had been in the publishing business for a very long time. And he says, you need to write this story. He said, it's like the moon landing. He was like, yeah. it's a hell of a story, but a large number of people probably won't believe it, but it still needs to be wow. told. So, you know, and, and I understand why now, because first of all, you know, it's helped me to, you know, get the word out so I can raise money for these children. And it's also helped for other people to reach out for me to me and other people to have the courage to step forward that are in these situations to say, if she can do this, if she can overcome this and take it all and turn it around, then maybe I can too. That's right. Dude. 
That's right, indeed. You can do it too. That's right, indeed. You don't need Mountain Dew or Nikes. You can do it too. That's right, indeed. That's yeah. right, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So my goodness, so turning pain into power. So my goodness, so escaping the jerk of an abuser. So my goodness, any telltale signs you want to inform folks about to look out for in case someone may be uh, sadly going through that type of relationships? So that way they can make an escape now as opposed to waiting till it's too late. That's one of the ideas that I have been thinking about writing uh, with a friend who who is a counselor. Uh, about, you know, the signs of what to look for, that type of thing. So, you know, I mean, that's that could be a whole a whole book in itself. But, you know, it's all about control. And um, that's what I said when I when I when I came to Las Vegas, I was like, I didn't even know who I was. I was like, what do I even like? Like, what how is what is my style? I didn't know what I like to eat. I didn't. So it's really on this trip and in Las Vegas is really where I where I found myself. Uh, that's right. So he kept pizza away from me for all these years. Along Coca Cola, he can't have either. <laughs> oh, and Coca Cola is my favorite. I've eaten all during that trip, and all I've eaten pizza and Coca Cola all over the world. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about, date. So my goodness, my goodness. So putting all these books together, since you got multiple of them out there, what was it like with the writing process, having to relive some of it? Well, it wasn't easy, you know, to relive uh, traumatic things. But at, at the same time, it was also healing. And the book that I'm working on now is about being a nurse in 2020 and what that looked like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Glad you made it out alive out of that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> call you call you heroes one year. Next year it's like, hey, so you need to take this vaccine, right? And it's like, uh, no, I think I'm okay. <laughs> You're fired. Like, wait, what? I'm like the hell? Yeah. So really, I wasn't gonna write about it, but then really it was what happened after 2020 that made me decide to write about nursing then. Yeah. Just the things that you just said, and many, many more. Uh, so so is there a taste of what to expect from the book? <laughs> well, you know, the idea is to make, to paint a picture for the reader of what 2020 looked like from a nurse's perspective inside the hospital. You know, because most of the, you know, most of the world, we people were quarantined in their homes, and, the, you know, the news was filled full of all of this this stuff, you know, is 24 seven news pumped into our homes about all this stuff that's going on. You know, we saw all this violence on television, but we also saw like great acts of courage. It was like, you know, but from an, it was, it was very different from a nurse's perspective because we were gouting up, gloving up, masking up and going into the very thing that everyone was quarantined from. So we we actually, those of us inside a hospital actually saw things, a little, our perspective is a little bit different on 2020. And as far as nursing, you know, I thought this would be good for the, even the general public. You know, even if you're not a nurse, even if you're not a doctor, even if you're not, you don't work in healthcare, why? It's because at some point in everyone's life, they're going to need a nurse. They're going to need that type of care. You know, we're there when people are born, we're there when people are sick, we're there when people pass on. You know, so I feel like what's going on now is going to affect everyone at some point. Yeah, definitely, definitely indeed. Cause yeah, just the <laughs> aftermath of even just the small things that you notice in people these days being more impatient and leaving quicker to anger. It's like, what the freaking hell? And that's just the uh, tip the iceberg of everything else that's still coming out from that year in the aftermath alone so my goodness my goodness so uh, what's helping you to really keep your head on straight as opposed to yes. on a swivel after dealing with all that <laughs> I know like cause, cause I always say you know when I came back from this great journey around the world that I was turning it all around and then I came back because that was 2019. It, it really wasn't that long ago all of these things happened. And, uh, you know, and then 2020 happened, you know, so it was kind of like, yeah, I was getting it all together and then 2020 happened. So 
what keeps me, like you said, the writing um, and, you know, working with these children. Sometimes for me, putting my own stuff to the side to help others is actually the best thing. Because sometimes you think, oh, well, I've really got it terrible and this is awful. And then you see something especially the things that I've seen in, in East Africa. And you're like, oh my gosh, my problems aren't that great. <laughs> you know, but this is what they're dealing with. Wow, you know. And um, in July, I'm getting ready to go back to Uganda. I'm going to the King's coronation. And I told you that I met an African prince when I was on this, you know, journey. And I'm going to the King's coronation of the Buganda Kingdom in, in, East, in Uganda. And uh, we're going to go help some more children. Oh, sounds good. It's right indeed. Sounds like it's going to be fun on the bunts and as good as the real deal. <laughs> and not the folks who may try to try to watch coming to America and use it for evil. <laughs> <laughs> I lived it. I lived it. <laughs> yes, I did. So <laughs> the prince that I dated, I write about what he, what I experienced when he came to Las Vegas to visit me. <laughs> so, yeah. So when he first saw, you know, the Venetian and, um, you know, the, the one that um, really stands out is when he first saw a Las Vegas showgirl. You know, that was very shocking to him because, you know, in his culture, you don't, show below the above the knee you don't dress in that manner and you know he was <laughs> he, he had an over exaggerated reaction but it was uh it was really quite comical and actually it taught me a lot about americans about us because you know when you go to other cultures or, or people from other cultures come to yours and they start asking questions you know why do you do this and i'm like I don't know. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. So, you know, uh, it's it was really quite comical. And I always say that, you know, that prince has, you know, nothing, has nothing, Eddie Murphy has nothing on him because it, it was real. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. So when I, deal indeed. You know, to be in, you know, to the King's coronation, you know, I, I don't know, is that a reverse of coming to America? You know, the the the, <laughs> the American goes to the kingdom. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been there before, and uh, that's in my book uh, about the journey that I went on. And I actually um, went to uh, Mango Palace, which is the palace that was built by the first president of Uganda, Edward Mutiza. And my guide that day was his grandson. So I will be, I'll be returning there in July to Mango Palace. <laughs> I guess the man had to go. <laughs> so my goodness, so sounds like you got a lot of exciting things in the metaphor pot. You got two books in the works and the coronation ceremony. So my goodness. <laughs> Like, what are you excited about in the future, and what should we expect from you? Like, what what's your folks be on the lookout for for Martha? Uh, like, it's becoming Mother Martha that came out last fall, and then when I come back from my trip, then we're going to release the book uh, about nursing in 2020, and it's called Frontlines 2020 Nurses Speak. Oh, okay. And uh, and I, I, I have a camera camera person and all of that. So we're going to try to make a lot of videos and, uh, you know, show people this trip. Cause the last trip, there wasn't a whole lot of video. Cause you know, I was trying to kind of stay on the down. Ah, I hear you. Actually, now to think about it and the abuser, is he dead or hidden somewhere? Or... <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a divorce over the telephone, by the way, and this was in 2018. So, you know, that might not be really weird for right now, but back then it was because I refused to return back to the state of West Virginia due to my safety. So I'm not really sure, you know, you hear rumors because we're from a very small place in West Virginia, you know, people talk. 
But uh, like I said, I did end up going back because I swore I was never going to go back. I was never going to do this and that. But actually going back and going to all those places, you know, you know how they say go back to the places where you cried and awful things happened to you and, and flip the script on that. And that's what I did. And actually, that was probably the best healing thing for my healing that I could have done. Uh, good deal indeed. All right. So right indeed, because safety is my concern indeed, as well as countless others I imagine indeed. That's right indeed. Because it's like, oh, sure, she's freaking popular. She's writing books and whatnot. And it's like, oh, crap. Hopefully uh, <laughs> the morons are oh, okay. keeping themselves ac- occupied. <laughs> oh, well, you know, has, has this, has there been safety issues for me? Of course, you know, cause I didn't even, um, until the last year, I didn't even feel safe showing my face. That's why I said when I went on that journey on the other side of the planet, I didn't feel safe showing my face. I didn't, you know, I put my writings out there, but no one ever saw my face. And, um, you know, and then, you know, going into, you know, as, as a white lady going into an East African country, you know, helping children, that also puts you at risk, you know, uh, for with safety things. But, you know, I have bodyguard and I have interpreters and all that kind of stuff. So we know how to how to do that now. Uh, there we go. Good deal, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So that means good. Superstar status protected. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Got to have that protection <laughs> in. Indeed. So my goodness, so since you've been on quite a few interviews and you got a bunch more to go, my goodness, is there a question that you wish folks would ask you more often? A lot of people ask me, the question that I get the most is, do you hate your ex? Do you dislike him? How do you feel about it now? And the answer is, this is probably going to sound very strange to some people, but now I'm kind of grateful for it all because if it hadn't happened, then I wouldn't have become the person who was brave enough, strong enough to do the things that I have done. Ah, uh, there we go. Hashtag brave nurse. You love it. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. <laughs> brave nurse. Ahoy. You love to see it. All the puns intended. <laughs> that's right indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, my goodness. So with got that book about the nurse coming up, and then you got the other book after that one. So those folks can uh, make their escape if they got a crazy abuser that they're attached to and going to a coronation. So my goodness, my goodness, with all that, how did the foundation really begin and how folks can contribute to the cows to help out the kids since Martha loves the kids and people love the kids. Absolutely. Well, how did it come to be? Uh, you know, when I got to Las Vegas, I said, you know, I feel like after these children did so much for me, you know, I mean, they took me in, they kept me safe for four months. They kept me hidden in their home. And I thought, what can I do to, to give back to them? I had always had a strong passion for helping there. I mean, I had, you know, this has been going on since 2014. I've been helping there. But after what they had done for me, that's when I really, I was like, wow, I really feel like this needs to be something bigger than what it is. So um, I started the foundation and my friend Kelly here in Las Vegas helps me with that. And Mother Martha Family Foundation.org is how everyone can help. And here in the next month, we're going to start selling t shirts and, um, you know, going out and uh, knocking on doors and asking for donations and for sponsors and that for children. Because when I get to Uganda, I'm going to show people not, you know, because when you give, sometimes you're like, "Eh, I don't know what happened. You know, I don't see what I don't see any results. But when I get there with cameras, I'm going to show you the children whose lives that they've changed. Uh, So heard that right, folks. Your change can make change. (laughs) That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. 
That's right. So that means folks have been lying all these years. They're saying what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, nope. <laughs> it's actually traveling <laughs> all over the globe. <laughs> yeah, no, I always get like I always get people teasing me. They're like, You leave Vegas to go to East Africa? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most people come here, you know, we get 40 million people from all over the world to visit, you know, Las Vegas. And it's the the Disneyland for adults, you know. Not me. I leave it and go travel all over the world. <laughs> there you go. Maybe go nun mode for a little while. Be like, yep. So let me leave Sin City. Put on the random nun outfit and be like, yep, I'm pure now. That's right. Purification from all the sins. <laughs> and you know you said that. And I, I said that the most interesting moment in 20. 22 for me was when Pat Boone asked me if I was a nun. <laughs> <laughs> he signed one of his books to me and then asked me if I was a nun. So that was that was the highlight of my 2022, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there you go. She's not a nun on the bun, y'all. <laughs> nope. Or a nun, period. <laughs> <laughs> Did not. And in fact, I, you know, at first he was, you know, uh, my sponsor child was calling me Mother Teresa. And this and I said, well, what are you calling me? Because you're always there. Do you always help? You always I'm like, oh, no, I'm no saint, honey. I'm a... <laughs> Don't call me that. But it just, it started in 2014 and it just kind of stuck. There you go. That's right. We knew the super glue would stick to you eventually. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So, my goodness, Eminem swag for 10 years coming up in 2014. I know it's way early for that, but it's kind of not way early, sadly. So, any thoughts or plans for the big 10 year anniversary? <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess we will see after I come back from this trip around the world, you know? Okay. All right. If you see her with the tannin and the TR, you know what happened. <laughs> I'm next month I'm getting ready to uh record the audiobook for my life story. You know, I figured, you know, once Mother Martha is gone off this planet, at least you can sit down and listen to me tell my story. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's good. That's right indeed. We need more of it. Certain days so that way folks will know. Certain days, especially in this age of Folks trying to pull the wool over your eyes and make you a sheep level 99 with extra wool and extra wonderful blindness of trying to not jump over fences. That's right. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. Don't be a sheeple, y'all. That's right indeed. If you become a sheeple, they'll turn you into a wool coat and then you'll wake up and realize, man, that was a nightmare. That's right indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. So my goodness, so if your wonderful book, Enjoy the Journey, how oh, you yeah. became a nurse from West Virginia to Mother Martha. If that book were a food, what would it be and why? Oh, pizza. <laughs> because I ate so much of it on that journey. <laughs> yeah. And everyone loves, you know, most people love pizza. That always leaves you feeling better. At least it does me. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Yeah, I should have known that question is going to be too easy for you. That's right, indeed. All the pizza. That's right, indeed. I, I, <laughs> it's funny. Usually joke with the guests. It's like, yep, there's going to be references to pie. Well, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, indeed. So happy pie is in this book, y'all. That's right, indeed. Soon you'll be hearing the happy pie. <laughs> The pizza pie, that is. That's right, indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is, if you don't wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're still in 2023, what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> wow, that would be awesome to wake up 25 again. I, the advice that I would give to myself is don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself time. Surrender is going to be okay, y'all. Surrender. 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 
That's right. You feel like you should be further along. Sometimes that's a feeling that's a trap. That's right, indeed. It's a trap. That's right, indeed. The name of the game, leave the cheese on the trap and don't put yourself in front of the cheese. Don't do it. That trap's for somebody else. Don't do that to yourself. That's right, indeed. Think of happy thoughts. That's right. Like happy pie. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Or, heck, even imagine yourself in a nurse's outfit, especially if you're a nurse, indeed. Actually, no, buddy, that's probably not a good idea. You're probably like, oh, God, I'm off the clock. Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But for those of you to say hello, nurse, and keep up with your journey, what's the best way for folks to do so? Oh, where can they find me? Well, you can find me on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and um, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, all right, there you go. That's right, indeed. So you're the right folks on the Amazons. Buy some copies of the books. That's right. And then she's on the IG, sliding to her DMs and be like, hey, hey, I would like to donate <laughs> to the magical cause, the Mother Martha Foundation, the MF, or should I say the MMF? That's right, indeed. Who needs <laughs> MMA when you got MMF? That's right, indeed. Yeah. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. And that doesn't stand for magnificent mother fudger. No, it doesn't. It stands for something else. That's my a lot better. That's right, indeed. The mother mother foundation. <laughs> <laughs> well, before any more rabbit holes appear. <laughs> With a wonderful hello. <laughs> Any parting words before we close up shop, Martha? <laughs> uh, no, I would just like to thank you for spending time with me and um, having this nice chat. Thanks a bunch for investing your time by listening to this wonderful podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you really did, do me a solid and leave a review or share this episode with at least three people that you think would get some value out of today's content. Advance others to advance yourself.